Hello everyone, welcome to session one in day two of PyCon Indonesia 2020. I'm Sigit Dewanto, I will be your moderator in this session. Uh, let me introduce you to the speaker for this session, Mas Fauzan Erich Emerling. Uh, Mas Fauzan is uh, currently uh, the uh, mobile product engineering lead at Gojek. Uh, he is a Python developer since uh, 2010. He is also co-founder of Python ID Jogja community, along with Ismail Sunni, Melza Arson, and Mas Eko Bibo, correct? Mas Ozan? Yes, correct. Yes, and I'm, I'm, I'm currently continuing their legacy now. <laughs> I hope I can, <laughs> I can continue uh, uh, the on the managing of Python Jogja community, so uh, the member will uh, get uh, many benefits from the community. Uh, Mas Fauzan is also an engineering manager at Gojek. Uh, in this session, Mas Fauzan will give presentation about the go faster use Python. Uh, without uh, for, uh, so for the participant, you can ask question using Hopin chat. And without further ado, the stage is yours, Mas Fauzan. Let's give a big round of total applause to Mas Fauzan. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Is my screen visible right now? I assume it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, apologies. I'm having some difficulties. It's suddenly the electricity is out. So I have to do everything on batteries and using my phone as my connection. But I'm trying to do uh, as best as I can uh, for this talk. OK, so um, today I'm going to talk about um, how to go faster with Python. Uh, and I'm going to discuss how we can do that using Cython. Uh, this will be my third PyCon. Uh, my first was in 2017. Uh, last year, I was the keynote in uh, Surabaya and this year, uh, it's my third. I feel honored to talk and uh, speak to all of you again this year. So, a little bit about me. Uh, currently, I'm a mobile product engineering lead. Uh, I daily don't really use uh, Python. Uh, most of the time, I use Kotlin because I work with Android products. Uh, however, uh, lately, I've been using Cython, actually. Uh, to actually build something. Uh, I'll tell a, a bit later uh, on, on the se session. So I have I, I can use Python as well in uh, the daily work. Uh, I've been a Python user since 2010. Uh, I was enlightened then, uh, I should say, if you saw my talk last year. I joined uh, Python ID in 2013. Um, it was a very good memory of mine. I met a lot of uh, inspirational people in the community. And that's why when I moved to Jogja in 2016, I talked with uh, Mas Ismail Sunni, Mas Mirza Arson, Mas Eko, and then we founded uh, Python ID Jogja chapter. I'm very grateful today that I can speak with Sigit, who is currently the community lead in Python ID Jogja, uh, continuing our work. I have a lot of things to do. And then uh, you can follow me on Twitter as well, if you like or want to hear my rant. Uh, uh, I do a lot of um, sharing in my uh, Twitter account as well. OK, without further ado, let's start the session. So this is what people say, right? Python is slow. <laughs> I like to throw at people that say that Python is slow. So um, before we uh, see why it's slow, we need to understand two So. Uh, first, interpreted at runtime. What does this mean? Um, it means that when you have a Python file, uh, before we can run it, it has to be interpreted. How does the process go? So say like this, you have your own Python file, right? And then this Python file will go through a interpreter. The interpreter will then do several things. First of all, it will verify the format, uh, whether the white space is correct, whether the language is uh, in compliance with whatever uh, standard Python is setting. And then it will check the syntax, whether you have syntax errors and stuff like that. If there are errors, it will raise uh, the error. And 
uh, it will translate it to bytecode. So instead of um, converting it to uh, bytecode, what does it do? Um, it will run it in this thing called Python virtual machine. So the Python virtual machine will then execute the code and raise errors if any, and it will provide the output. So you can see that actually it's not directly run uh, straight into the machine, but it has to go through several steps of uh, processing before it can actually run. So uh, this is first point of um, causing it to slow down. Second thing that we uh, need to understand is what does it mean by dynamic typing? So every variable in Python is like this. Uh, first, it has an object head, which will determine what type that is, and then uh, what's the value. So say, for instance, we have this code over here. Um, a is 1, uh, B equals 2, C equals A plus B. In other languages, it will be uh, as simple as, uh, say, A is an integer, right? You're going to say, say in C, that's only one, one instruction there. For the second one, it's also the same create a new variable called C with a type of integer, and then you assign the uh, value there. Now, how does it run in Python? Now, let's see. Uh, first one is we have the A, right? You want to assign A equal uh, to integer, and then it will set the value to one. So instead of having one instruction to run, it will have two. Same thing applies for second line. Inspect value and set the object head to enter here and then set the value to 2. Now say if you have C, you want to do the addition, right, between A and B, what does it do? There are eight steps. Oh, I'm very sorry. Um, my Susan is having some internet issue. Uh, let's wait until uh, he can get back to us. Hello, Mas Susan. Ah, uh, sorry. Can you... <laughs> Where, where was, okay, where was okay. I last? Sorry, I, did, I didn't realize the connection was off. <laughs> uh, I think it uh, when you doing demo. Uh, okay, the, the, the code, right? The code, yes. And yeah. uh, the code doesn't appear when the, the last time. Okay, okay. So. I'm, not, I'm not showing the code. It uh, should be here. So I'm, I'm, I'm explaining about the dynamic typing, basically. Um, so, okay, let's speed it up a bit. So every time you have uh, an operation with dynamic typing, this is what happens. So say you have A equals 1, this is what is actually done in the back. Uh, Mas Hosan, have you yeah. shared your screen? Wait, sorry. Okay. Can you see it now? Oh, yes. It's good now. Okay. okay. So this is what happens in, in, in dynamic typing. So first you inspect the value. And then once you find out it's an integer, you set the pi object at the integer. And then you set the A value to 1. This is what happens. So it's more than, say, if you use uh, C, it will be only like create uh, integer uh, variable name A and value is 1. So this one you should inspect first. Instead of one operations, you do two. Same thing with the second one. You have to inspect the value and then assign it. And then for C, it's a bit long. So usually in, in other languages, what you will do is you will uh, only do the operations and then assign to a new variable called C, right? But this one you need to find the type. You need to find the type first. And then you know that it's an integer. And then once both is an integer, you call the binary add, you store the result temporarily, create the object, and then you need to set the head to integer first, and then you can set the value. So this is what's causing it to be slow. Right? And you have to execute uh, a lot of instructions uh, to do these operations compared to other languages, for instance. That's right. Now, but, but you know, uh, what Python is good at, right? First of all, it's good for expressing ideas, um, and it's good for prototyping. Uh, regarding these two, it's something that currently we need um, a lot, especially in the business world, right? 
uh, if you're working in a startup, you need to be able to express ideas uh, with your teammates. And Python does that very good. Because, uh, you know, I mean, like a programming language, the main consumption is actually not a machine. You can write in whatever language you want. The machine will just execute whatever you write, no matter how good or how bad the language is. But uh, the main consumption will be for other programmers. And when you're, com when you're expressing your ideas with other program programmers, it's good if you have something that can easily be understood by other programmers. And Python is very good for that purpose, for expressing ideas. Um, Python is also good for um, prototyping. Uh, we all know that uh, Google was first written in uh, Python when it was uh, still named Backup back then, because it's easy. You can write it fast. It's easy to understand. You can execute things fast. And you can change things fast using Python. Right? That's why it's good for prototyping. And it's also the language we all love. Right? If not, why do you even come to PyCon? Um, and you could put whatever reason you want about Python, right? So we need to find a way to be able to make sure that it can be optimized and how can it run faster. So that's for my talk today. I will explain about Cython. So what is Cython? Python is a tool to convert your basic Python codes into C codes that can be compiled as Python extension that you can import in your Python code. So one benefit from Python is uh, we accept C extensions. And with C extensions, we can get the power of C, uh, the speed of C that we have, uh, but uh, executing it in Python codes. And then next, it's good for integrating native code to Python. It can speed up your Python code. And you can write C without C, right? A bit on this. So uh, integrating na native code uh, into Python, you can directly import the native code using uh, Cython easily. And then speeding up your Python code is something I'm going to talk about today. Uh, write C without C is something that I tell you I'm currently doing in Gojek. So part of what I'm doing right now is I have to do integration with third party systems. And when I'm doing integration with third party systems, I have to have something that can be uh, written only once, but uh, can be used in uh, many platforms. So that's what I do. So for the integrations, the API, we will write using Python. And then we uh, pile it into the C codes. And then it, the C codes can be compiled uh, in whatever platform our third party integration needs it as a native code. Right? So it's, it, it saves up time for us. Instead of writing one by one in each of the platforms, we can just write once and let it run everywhere. OK, so now let's uh, delve more into speeding up your Python code. So what do you need? First of all, of course, you need to have Python installed. Uh, I do not recommend using Python 2 anymore, even though Python still supports. But yeah, it's, it's end of life already, right? Use Python 3. Um, and then next thing, you need to install Cython. This is very simple. All you need to do is just this, just install Cython. And then you need to install a C compiler. Uh, this depends on your um, depends on your machine. I'm, I'm running on a Mac, so I use uh, GCC. And then you need to write Python codes in a .py or .tyx file. You can compile both, but usually to separate the Python extensions that I'm going to convert using Cython, I'm going to, I, I usually use the PYX file. OK, so what do you need to do to compile? First of all, this is all you need to do. Once you already installed Cython, you only need to run Cythonize uh, minus I minus A minus 3 uh, file name. What does this actually do? So first of all, minus I is to make a build in place. So it's in the same place as uh, what you want to build. And then minus A is to generate an HTML file uh, of how your code interacts. So a Cython uh, package comes with tool to, imp to improve. So every time you compile your code, it will generate an HTML file to see how much your Python interacts. I mean, like your code interacts with Python. Uh, if you want to optimize it, the last interaction, it would be better. So it will be marked, each line will be marked with a yellow color. 
the darker the yellow color is, the more interactions you have. The lighter it is, or if it's white, then there's no interaction with Python in the code. And then minus three is we use Python three directives. So uh, instead of using Python two, you force it to use Python three. Uh, something that's actually recommended for now. File name is whatever you wish to compile. Uh, you can even compile with uh, an asterisk to compile several files. So everything that PYX will be compiled as well. So uh, let's see a demo for this one. Um, OK, so say we have this uh, Fibonacci sequence, uh, a very famous one, right? Uh, that you all learned about this. Uh, I don't use the recursive one because of the limitations from uh, Python, uh, where you can only run uh, 1,000 recursion depth. So that limits us in executing uh, our code, right? And then I will also have a test that will run this, right? So if we run this, uh, say, first 10,000 uh, Fibonacci uh, series, and then I want to get the last one only for the value. This is how we can do it, and I'll run it this way. Right? So I have this function over here and the test. And what's the name? Test. Okay. I want to run it. It will take me 234 milliseconds. Sorry, it should be milliseconds instead of seconds, right? 234 milliseconds to run that uh, using Python. Not bad for uh, a lot of number crunching, right? I mean, it's, it's a huge number. But let's see if we can make this faster. So if you look here, I already prepared uh, a similar one, which is a PYX. Uh, it's a bit similar, but I changed the FIP into FIPC, so I can differentiate it. Right. Uh, sorry, my uh, can same you code zoom, if you want to compare. Zoom in so. the code. Sorry? Yep. Uh, can you zoom the code because the audience cannot see the code Ooh. clearly? Not that clear. Hmm. Wait. Uh, um. Is it better now? Oh, let me ask the audience. Is it better? Good. Uh, let me ask the audience. Okay. Uh, no response yet. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, while, while, while waiting, it's it's basically the same code. It's just I'm gonna compile this using Python, right? So um, let's do the compilation now. Uh, Python i minus i minus a minus b. Fipc dot by what? By X, and then it's going to run. Okay, so it's compiling, building the extension. So I intentionally use my old laptop for this talk, uh, so you can see how it can actually improve the performance. Right? So now it's running. Uh, okay, Marcel, then now the and the code looks better. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So yeah, now it's compiled. If you see here, uh, if I refresh this, we will have a dot so over here, right? and it's uh, C Python or Python 3.9. Because I'm running in Mac, it's uh, for Darwin, and it's also generating the HTML. First, before we delve uh, a lot into it, let's see how it performs now. Now let's see if I change this. I'll comment out this line. Comment this. So now instead of using the Python library, I'll use the C library that we have. Before it's executed in 234 milliseconds. Now let's see how it goes with this one. Now, 
it runs in 140 milliseconds. So you see how without further optimizations, you can already improve by what? Almost 100 milliseconds between the uh, Python code and the uh, Python results of optimization. Now, how can we uh, see whether we can still improve or not? Now, uh, we need to see what? here. Uh, I have the HTML file here that I can open. Here we see uh, there's a lot of yellows, right? Uh, only the series that append. That's that's not that much uh, interaction, right? It's only like one line. But for others, not really that fast. Now a lot of things. Uh, boil down to what I explained before, right? like how you need to do dynamic typing. Here we don't do, uh, uh, we don't help the the interpreter a lot right, uh, to improve, but we can do that. So let's let's look back at the code and see what we can improve. First thing that we can do is we can set this as an integer, right? Because it will definitely be an integer. Um, next. What we can do is we set. Uh, yeah, this one is very slow. Uh, not not going to be that much difference for that's only for stop and end, right? But we have the series uh, with the amount we already set the uh, type, and then we have the loop over here. If you see, right, the loop over here. Now we have the i here, so the i needs to be uh, set as well if you want to make it into a an integer loop, a c integer loop, for instance. And since it's going to be uh, simplified, we can say i is an integer. And then what else that needs to be set that? Um, max value here will hold the result, right? But uh, in Python 3, uh, we combine both long integers and integers as the int type. So we're going to set that as an int as well. So I'm going to set the next value and set it into int. Now this should speed up a lot because now the loop is um, uh, an integer-based loop, and uh, the calculation is done. More, uh, we we are removing some steps uh, regarding the uh, type checking. So now let's uh, go back and recompile. Okay, it's building again. Okay, now it's done. Now let's see how it is here. See? Now you have things that are not uh, yellow anymore. Less operations, uh, less interactions with Python and let's see how it goes. Be result now 400. Wait, even longer. Something must be <laughs> maybe I have extra processes running in my machine now. Usually, it's faster. Okay, anyway, uh, that's that's basically how you would do the um, how you would do the uh. Optimizations. Yeah, I, I need to delve further, right? And this is a uh, ongoing presentation, so I would need to see more. Okay. Now, yeah, we already see how we can improve. Uh, how about we do something bigger? That one is a small uh, process, right? So I have this uh, another live coding session. I have this um, pet project. Uh, so I created a my own key value store, like anyone else not, right? I had my own key value store, which is written in, uh, basically in Python, this one, right? So what it does is it uh, stores your data in a key value store format where you have one resource as a marker, consider it like a table, and you have the content of the table uh, called member. Uh, 
Um, you can see this in my GitHub account. So I want to I wanna optimize this, right? So uh, first of all, what I want to do is I want to test the performance of my code, right? So I write this um, load test over here. Hey, sorry. Uh, I have a load test over here in which I'm going to uh, do a looping of an amount of time I'm going to put data and write. And uh, I have this function to set expiry time, right? This is going to be resource heavy. So I set it into, I can set it into whatever amount, right? So let's see if I want to do this, say, 100 times. Or maybe say make it more interesting. Let's do it for a thousand times. Then let's do it with. Um, let's execute that one. We're gonna run it for a thousand times. Uh, need to wait for a while. And the results are out. Still there. I intentionally use this uh, laptop, by the way, just to show that uh, even on, uh, I mean, I, and I like to optimize for uh, slow machines because if you can optimize it for slow machines, you can optimize it for bigger machines. As well. For it, times. Maybe a thousand times is a lot, right? Let's see. Uh, let me simplify it. Let's run it, say, 10 times first and see how it goes. Oops. Oh, wait. So it's run in, okay, uh, 17 milliseconds for 10, right? Um, and then uh, I already write an optimization for that one. So I do several things here. Uh, first thing that I do is I use UJSON, which is a C extension as well, to make it faster for JSON writing. And then I optimize uh, several things regarding this. So the, the, the function that I'm using is the put member, right? So I put uh, typing inside it. And also for the uh, function to create member, I also have it here. And another thing is when I create a new member, I need to get the I need to calculate the expiry time first. Now this is done in Python. Well, it can actually be done using the uh, Python as well. So instead of using the utils, I'm writing this one as an extension as well, and I put the uh, optimizations as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two things, I'm going to compile uh, both the C utils and the C version of my extension. First, I'm going to compile the utils. Okay, that is done. Next, I'm going to compile the engine itself, the data engine. I'm going to do the same, but this time I'm going to do the that one. Okay. 
Okay, while it compiles, I'm going to change the load test. Do you zoom the Python version? And I'm going to write that. I'm going to run that one. Okay, this will take a, lot, a while. It's a long file. Okay. Basically, compiler warning and all. It's quite a while because it has to compile a lot of things. Plus streaming this, right? So the CPU, if you can see it's on 100%. <laughs> okay. While waiting, uh, some key takeaways uh, from optimizing, right? Uh, so first of all, you need to um, understand how things work under the hood. Right? Okay. Let me just share it with this one, uh, simpler. And then you need to brush up on C data structure and data types so you can understand. Uh, use type hinting for your code. Uh, and then you have to be a good friend to generate that HTML file uh, so you can read and understand what's happening. And then, yeah, basically Python is slow, but you can definitely speed it up uh, using uh, measures in, in uh, Cython right? and how you write your code. OK, it's done. Mm, now let's see how it runs. My CPU is still at 100%, so it'll take longer. Sorry, sorry. Um, okay, let's see the load test. Before, the number was Seventeen milliseconds. Now let's see. Nine milliseconds. So it's like uh, almost half of the time. It's way faster because uh, in if you take a look at the code, right? For uh, this one over here, especially, it's doing um, for the utils. This one is doing. Uh, a lot of uh, calculations, right? And when you're doing the calculations in C, it's way faster compared to doing it in Python. That's that's how we get the major increase. So yeah, uh, you can definitely speed things up and you can do it like a lot, uh, speed up. So yeah, I think that's uh, from my session. If you have any questions, I'll, have, I'll happily answer the questions. That's it, thank you. Okay, thanks, thanks a lot, Ms. Fauzan. Uh, we yeah. already have some questions from the audience. Uh, yeah, sure. The first one is from Mas Zaki Ahmad. Since you are not using Python in your daily job, how do you maintain your Python skills start? <laughs> Interesting question. Well, I have, I have, that's a very good question. It happens to uh, some people as well. First of all, of course, what I do is I have my pet projects, right? Like uh, the one that I just use uh, for demonstration. That one is uh, a 
pet project, right? I created my own data store for my own use case. That's one way. And also like uh, watching videos or maybe like what I'm doing right now, right? Attending PyCon. So that's how you maintain your skills. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> I do about a pet project. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, like, who doesn't have for, right? <laughs> Yeah, from Fahim Jatmiko, what are the drawbacks you see in Python? Um, some of the drawbacks would be for advanced um, optimizations where you have to do more and more uh, C codes. I mean, like, you can simply use C codes in, in, in Cython, right? I mean, like, it's both Python and C as well. But yeah, I would say C without the curly braces that we don't love. <laughs> so you will need to also understand more and more of uh, C for, for, for using Cython. I mean, it's not going to be magical. You still need to understand what's happening. Uh, so yeah, uh, you, you, you need to delve further into what is actually in the other side of the world. I mean, like Python or the C Python that we're using, it's basically written in C as well. Right? So it's always good to understand C. OK. Uh... My question is for Master Girl Imansia. Can we use Python typing library or it it is Python syntax? Okay, so we can use both. Uh, Cython has its own typing library, uh, but if you use uh, Python's library, it works as well. But the difference is if you're using the Cython library, uh, the interactions with Python codes will be very minimal. It could, it could be until white if you use it. But if you use the uh, Python library, there's a big chance you still have uh, those yellow colors, even though not that much. But at least it's improving. Like like like, like what you see in in my demo, right? You can you can actually uh, do stuff with it and play around. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the next is from Satoya Adi Prabowo. Will Python work well if we use any other Python packages or framework? Definitely. Um, I mean, like, um, if you let me share screen a bit eh, to, to to get this clear. Like, if you if you look at my code, uh, wait. If you look at my code over here in the PYX, right? This I I use other packages like OS, uh, Vue, JSON. These are all other Python packages, right? And um, this is from a different package as well. It's working well. There's no issue. It's it's a it's a it's a good way to uh, combine Python package and Python packages, or with C libraries as well. So there are examples where where people are using libc and stuff like that. Uh, it's actually right, like like the one I use at work, right? I mean, like I write uh, Python and then uh, combine it with uh, C libraries that is needed. Say for for instance for serialization that's that's already been provided, we combine it with that, and in the end you will have one .so file that you can you can combine. You, you can learn more about it on how you can integrate or build it as a single package. More on the site and documentation. The uh, then a question is for Mastia Budi. Is it better to build a project entirely in Cython from the beginning, or write in a plain Python first and then optimize some parts by converting it in Cython? Um, this is my view. Yeah. Uh, some people might be different. From me, I would definitely use Python first and then optimize parts that I think needs uh, optimization. I mean, like there will be parts that are already good. Uh, you don't really need to optimize it a lot. And you can you can you can optimize it piece by piece depending on which part is the bottleneck. So like like for instance, the the one that you saw saw me optimize the library, I don't have that. Uh, I mean that's that's two parts, right? The first part is the public interface, which is using a REST API. I don't optimize that. Pretty good using Sanic. The performance is already good. I don't need to. Um, I don't think I need to optimize that one. But in terms of read write and uh, number crunching, which happens in the core library. That's the one that I'm optimizing. So, so uh, it really depends. But for me, I will start from Python first and then optimize uh, from there. OK, cool. Uh, I think this is the last question from DS Akpa. I use Cython when de deploying my app on client server. But I use it for encrypting my code to avoid reverse engineering. 
is it site on the best way to encrypt the code or do you have any uh and <laughs> sorry okay yeah 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 um uh, so for encrypting code if your client is not smart enough then it's fine but i think like we have the compilation tool right that, that can break it down but even when that happens they have they can only decompile it to see right they cannot really get your source from uh python so it will be harder for them so that, that that's actually a good way already to, to, to start right? um again it, it's a it's a way to help you uh, optimize things or maybe if you need to write c without c make it simpler for you Okay, uh, I think that's all uh, because uh, actually we have uh, other question, but unfortunately the time is up. So thanks a lot, Mas Fosian, yeah. for sharing about Python, and also thank you for sure, the thanks. audience for for yeah. uh, watching this talk. Uh, so see you at the other session. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, if you have uh, if you have any further questions, you can ask me on Twitter. I'll respond. Right. Yes, your Twitter. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.